All right, beta bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The topic that we are going to do today is statement of financial position SOFP. So the question that we have today is a uh, question before Big. So I'm reading the question for you guys. Big is a sole trader. The following balances were extracted from our books on 28 February 2017. Now, as you can see, if the year is ending on February 17, then year must have been started on after February comes March. Okay, so the year must have been started on 1st March 2016. Okay, we have these items given. These are known as list of balances. So let us read them once. Uh, we have revenue purchase. As you can see, these items are already highlighted. So this means we have already used these items while preparing an income statement. Okay, but right now we are not making an income statement. Right now we are making a statement of financial position, also previously known as a balance sheet. Okay. We have revenue purchases return inward and return outward. Okay, so the examiner has now uh, instructed not to use the words return inward and outward. Instead, use sales return and purchase return. Okay, instead of return inward, we are going to use sales return and return outward. We are going to use purchase return now onwards. Then we have administration expenses, insurance, rent, receivable. Anything that is written receivable, this is an other income electricity staff salaries these were all expenses advertising and general expenses so we have already dealt with these items previously so we do not need to worry about them anymore then we have some non-current assets non-current assets are one that have life for more than one year okay we have leasehold building then we have shop fixtures then the computer equipment we have provision for depreciation that is the total depreciation till date for leasehold building shop fixtures and computer equipment as well then we have a disposal account and the balance of that is given debit balance disposal account so disposal account if it's given as a debit then it is a loss from disposal and if it's given as a credit then it's a gain of disposal we have already uh, must have been recorded this gain or loss in the income statement in this case it's a loss uh, as it is debit in nature okay so if you guys have any question you may ask the question uh, then uh, we have a 8% bank loan. Bank loan is basically a liability. Now we need to see whether it's a non-current liability or a current liability. And how can we make sure about that? As you can see, the year ends on February 17. Now any liability that needs to be paid uh, in the next year, that is uh, year ending 28 February 2018. All of these must be a non-current, uh, sorry, current liabilities. Now, as you can see, we have to uh, pay the liability uh, in uh, next year, that is December 17. Then, uh, so this means it's a current liability and not a non-current liability. Okay, any liability that needs to be paid in the next year, it's a current liability and liability that needs to be paid after 18, that is uh, 19 or 20 onwards, then it must be a non-current liability. Okay, then we have some other items. First of all, we have inventory. Uh, and the, in the list, the inventory that we have is an opening inventory and in the notes, we have a closing inventory. Then we have a bank balance. If the bank is given as a debit, then it is a positive bank balance. And if it's written as a credit, then it must be a bank overdraft. Overdraft means we have withdrawn more money from our bank than we actually have. Okay, so we need to return that. But in this case, it's a positive bank balance. Trade receivables are our credit customers. Trade payables are our credit suppliers. Then we have provision for doubtful debt, capital and drawing. Now these adjustments are given additional information. We have already used all of these adjustments once while preparing income statement. Uh, so in the last lesson, we already uh, we also studied about a technique known as double tick. Now what was the double tick technique? Double tick technique means all of these adjustments that is additional information needs to be used not once but twice. Okay, so as soon as we use it one time, we are going to uh, highlight it and or tick it. And if when we are using it the second time, we need to tick it once again. Okay, so all of these list of balances uh, needs to be used only once. But these additional information needs to be used twice. So we need to put a double tick on these. Okay, so we already uh, learned how to prepare income statement. As you can see, we have already uh, prepared income statement for this question previously uh, it, Sorry, it's not this question. It was the big question. Yes, 
we studied a uh, income statement for big question but now what we need to do we need to prepare a statement of financial position that is part b as you can see in part b we need to prepare a statement of financial position so dear students we studied in the previous class as well so an sofp is always made in three columns and what will be these three columns be used for we are going to discuss it in a while so as you can see there are three columns three columns cannot be a debit and credit so these three columns are just for the presentation so if the uh, heading is not given in the question first of all you need to put the heading but most of the time examination question already contains a heading so we do not need to write the heading so if instead if we are required to write the heading so we need to write the name of the owner first then the statement of financial position then as at and the end of the year date so therefore uh, we are making an sofp at the end of the year date that is on 28 february okay so accounting uh, equation you must have been studied previously uh, statement of financial position beta is always made on the premise of uh, accounting equation accounting equation says assets equals capital plus liability so first of all we are going to start with assets we can skip this asset heading if we want then after assets as you may be aware there are two types of assets non current assets and current assets so we are going to start with the uh, heading non current assets and uh, in the uh, in the front of non current asset we are going to put three headings uh, one for cost of the assets then the accumulated depreciation also known as provision for depreciation then the nbv nbv stand for net book value okay there are three headings for non current asset now in the question let us see uh, what uh, sort of non current assets do we have in this question let us see the non current asset uh, if i go through the question first asset that we do have is lease old building now as you can see lease old building cost us 90000 so we are going to put lease old building cost 90000 secondly we need accumulated depreciation also known as provision for depreciation as you can see in the provision for depreciation heading uh, we have already given a depreciation of previous years that is 13500 uh, but what we need to do we need to, we already calculated this year depreciation as well when while preparing an income statement so let us see the income statement and let us see the notes once again just to recap that how did we uh, ended up calculated this figure for depreciation for current year now in note 7 as you can read the building are held on a lease of 20 years so therefore uh, the useful life of the asset is 20 years and appropriate amount is charged on the lease so my dear students whenever we are given the cost uh, of a non current asset and we are given the life of the non current asset we just simply need to divide the cost with the useful life now as you can see the cost of the lease old building was 90000 and the life is 20 years so what we did while preparing income statement we divided the cost of the non current asset with the useful life and here uh, comes the depreciation value for current year that is 4500 okay so in the current year we depreciated our lease old building by how much by 4500 and what was the depreciation that we have previously 13500 so now what we need to do we need to add up both of these values current year depreciation 4500 and previous years depreciation 13500 Uh, in order to arrive at the closing accumulated depreciation value, thirteen five hundred plus forty five hundred becomes eighteen thousand. So out of this ninety thousand, we have already used this much of uh, lease old building. Okay. So if I deduct accumulated depreciation from the original cost, I am left with NBV net book value. Then we have secondly shop fixtures. Okay, shop fixtures. Now let us see uh, what uh, about shop fixtures. As you can see, shop fixtures cost. shop fixtures cost uh, so the cost of shop fixtures that we do have is 24000 okay the cost of shop fixtures is 24000 now let us see is there any adjustment relating to shop fixtures in the current year yes i can find one in note number 6 as you can see during the year shop fixtures costing 28000 sorry 8000 were purchased payment were made by check but no entries have been booked made so this means we omitted this transaction now we need to record this transaction so the entry that we need to make a shop fixture account would be debited and the bank account would be credited okay 
so what we need to do we need to add the shop fixtures by 8000 further okay so the 24000 was the value that has already been recorded and the 8000 needs to be added so the total shop fixtures that we do have now is 32000 okay so what about the accumulated depreciation as you can see in the shop fixtures beta we already have a provision for depreciation for previous years that is 14000 so this means our fixtures have already been depreciated by 14000 by the start of this year or by the end of the previous year so this year we need to charge further depreciation and as you can see in the notes what is the uh, rate for depreciation for this year uh, shop fixtures uh, should be depreciated at 15 percent using straight line now you must remember uh, in, from the depreciation topic that in a straight line we just need to apply 15 percent on the original cost okay so as you can see the original cost of shop fixtures how much uh, is the cost for shop fixtures is 24,000 uh, and plus we already added one more that is 32,000 so what we uh, did in while preparing income statement we need to apply 15 percent on 32,000 so the depreciation would be 4,800 okay 4,800 depreciation needs to be charged this year and previously we had depreciation how much we already had a depreciation of 14,000 okay so 14,000 plus 4,800 if we add up both of these the total depreciation would be 18,800 so if I deduct this value from this so the NBV would be 13,200 okay let us see uh, which other non-current assets we do have but uh, the third non-current asset that we do have in the list is computer equipment okay so the cost of computer equipment is 60,000 this means we have bought this computer for how much 60,000 and let us see how we ca can calculate accumulated depreciation so the provision for depreciation previously that we do have is 42,000 and what we need to do we need to add up this year's depreciation as well and we already calculated this year's depreciation let us see how did we calculate it this year depreciation using 30 percent reducing balance now uh, you must uh, be remember that uh, in a reducing balance when we apply percentage that this percentage needs to be applied on the net book value and not the original cost and how did we calculate it net book value net book value beta is calculated if we deduct uh, the provision from de depreciation from the original cost then we are left with net book value okay 60,000 was the cost of non-current asset and 42,000 was previous year's depreciation okay 60,000 is the cost and 42,000 was previous year's depreciation now I am left with 18,000 that is net book value and I need to apply 30% on the 18,000 and, and to arrive at this figure 5400 so 5400 is basically this year's depreciation and the previous year's depreciation was 42,000 so what I need to do I need to add up both of these 42,000 plus 5400 so that I can get total depreciation till date and that is 47,400 so this means out of the 60,000 original cost I have already used this much of uh, cost of my computer and the remaining value of the computer in my books is this netbook value okay so uh, this cost and accumulated depreciation work is over so I do not need the total for cost and accumulated instead I just need the net book value total that is if I add up all of these so the total NBV would be 97,800 okay so after non-current asset there comes current assets in current assets value first of all we are going to write inventory and it would be a closing inventory why because SOFP needs to be made at the end of the year now as you can see at the end of the year we have closing inventory in note 1 so we have already used note 1 once uh, closing inventory needs uh, we need closing inventory while preparing an income statement and in cost of sale we already use the closing inventory once now I am using it a uh, second time so therefore I am uh, using the double tick so the closing inventory I am going to write in the second column and why I am writing it in the second column uh, most of the things would go in the second column so that uh, we need to add up these and write the subtotals in the third column okay but there are only two things or uh, that needs to be written in the first column uh, one is the cost of non-current asset and secondly trade receivables and provision so why are we writing trade receivable in the first column so uh, there is one more thing that needs to be deducted from the trade receivables and that is provision for doubtful debt 
Now, how much trade receivable that we do have in the question? As you can see, the trade receivable value that we do have is 34,500. Okay. Out of this 34,500, first of all, we need to see is there any irrecoverable debt? Yes. In note number eight, it's clearly written that out of this trade receivable value, 2,500 uh, was considered irrecoverable and should be written out. So the entry for this was irrecoverable debt account was debited. Uh, in the income statement and in the SFP, we need to deduct the trade receivable value by 2500. Okay, because this customer, these are the customer that will no longer will pay us. Okay, so I am going to deduct uh, 2500 from this value in order to arrive the net value that is 32,000. So you must remember, dear students, that in an SFP, we never write uh, irrecoverable debt. Instead, irrecoverable debt is always deducted. Uh, while writing a trade receivable. So we do not need to show a recoverable debt. Uh, and the thing that we need to show is what uh, is a provision for doubtful debt. Okay, I'm ne I, I need to deduct the provision as well. So first of all, we are going to deduct uh, uh, irrecoverable debt from the trade receivables. And on this net amount, I need to apply the provision percentage. And what is the percentage for provision for doubtful debt, as you can see? The provision percentage is 5%. Okay. So I just need to apply 5% on this value and 5% of 32,000 is 1600. So if I deduct a provision from the trade receivable value, I'm left with 30,400. Uh, so just to remember it, only uh, two things come in uh, in the first column. Firstly, uh, is the cost of non current asset and secondly, trade receivables and provision. Okay. All other things would go in the second column and the first column will now be left blank. After trade receivable would comes other receivables. Okay. Uh, there are two things that must come under other receivables. One can be prepaid expense and secondly, it can be accrued income. Now, let us see are there any prepaid expense or accrued income in the question? Uh, so, it must be written in the notes. In note number three, as you can see, uh, rent receivable was owing. Okay, it is an income that is owing. Owing means accrued. Accrued income means that we have provided the service, we have provided uh, the space to our tenant. Okay, but our tenant has not yet paid us rent. Okay, so this is an income accrued, and the accrued income is basically an asset. So therefore, we are expecting this rent uh, anytime now. So therefore, it is a current asset. Okay, so the accrued income must be written as a current asset. And one more thing that can come in a current asset is prepaid expense. Prepaid expense means we have paid for more than uh, that we need to pay. So the extra amount that we have paid to our what? Our uh, supplier. So it therefore it is a prepaid expense and it must also come under current assets. So but in this question, we do not have any current assets. Then after that, we need to uh, write bank balance or a cash balance. Now, as you can see, the bank balance is already given that is 20,500. And we also need to make sure is there any adjustment relating to bank. So I can find one during the year shop fixtures were purchased and payment were made were checked. No entries were made. So what we did, uh, firstly, we need to uh, increase the fixtures amount that we already did. So the entry that must have been made, the general entry would be shop fixture account would be debited and the bank account would be credited. Okay, so we have already debited the fixtures, but now what we need to do, we need to credit this bank account. So what we need to do, we need to deduct the bank account by this amount 8,000. So the, the money that is left in the bank is only 12,500. Okay, so I have made the double tick. So therefore I have used the entry twice. So all of these current assets must be added and the subtotals must be written in the third column. Okay, so the non current asset we have already written once uh, and then we have current assets. What we need to do, we need to add up both of these assets in order to arrive the total assets value. Okay, asset non current plus current asset is equal to total assets. So, but uh, we have already learned accounting equation and accounting equation says that assets always equal capital plus liability. Okay. So assets equals capital plus liability. We have already done with assets. Then we have to write capital and liabilities. Okay. So 
capital liability first of all we are going to go through for capital so first of all we are going to write opening capital now opening capital is the capital that we had at the start of the year back the owner the capital that she had at start of the year now the capital beta that is given in the list of balances or trial balance is always opening capital okay although the examiners uh, mostly doesn't mentions it as an opening capital but we are uh, sure that it's an opening capital because a closing capital is never given it always needs to be calculated okay so the opening capital that we do have is 100000 after opening capital what comes uh, add profit for the year so if there is a profit we need to add it up because profit increases our capital and if it's a loss we need to deduct it because loss decreases our capital now as you can see in this question we do have a profit or loss but uh, we have a loss for the year in this question we already learned how to prepare an income statement it's a loss for the year so loss needs to be deducted from opening capital and if it was a profit that needs to be added okay after a uh, profit your loss there comes another thing that is drawing and drawings always decreases our capital now what are drawings whenever the owner take out anything from the business a bit cash or from bank or goods so it is known as a drawing now let us see is there any drawing already given yes the drawing figure that we do already have is how much drawing figure is 9500 now is there any adjustment relating to drawing let us read these staff salary include 8000 paid to big now as you can see big is the owner and we cannot pay salary to owner instead if the owner withdraws money from the bank then it's not the uh, salary but instead it's a drawing okay whenever owner take out money from the bank then it's a drawing so what we need to do the entry that needs to be made is drawing account would be debited drawing account would be debited and staff salary account would be credited so what we need to do we need to increase the drawing value now the drawing that value that we already have is 9500 and uh, here what we need to do we need to uh, increase the drawing further by 8000 okay so the 9500 that is already given plus further drawing that big took in the name of salary so this also needs to be added in drawing so this is the total drawing opening capital add profit or less loss for the year then less drawings uh, now here comes the closing capital so this 69000 value is the closing capital although we do not need to write closing capital why because it is understood that this is the closing capital value okay uh, assets then capital and finally we have liabilities first of all we need to write non current liabilities then we need to write current liabilities okay so in this question we do not have any non current liabilities non current liabilities are liabilities that will be paid after one year okay but uh, as we studied previously discussed previously the loan that is given uh, needs to be repaid in the next year okay so the any liabilities that needs to be repaid in the next year are current liabilities and not the non-current liability okay so this loan would be written as a current liability and what about these uh, current uh, now as you can see in current assets we had an item with a name of trade receivables okay so if trade receivables uh, belong to the current assets then the trade payable must go in a current liability now are there any trade payables trade payables are our suppliers whom we owe money because we have bought the goods on credit so the trade payables value that we do have is 25600 after trade payables come other payables other payables are basically accrued expense or prepaid income it can be prepaid income as well now let us see in the notes are there any single ticks left because if there is already double tick therefore we have already used these items okay we have used depreciation we have used doubtful debt we have used note 6 uh, and as you can see there are two single ticks still left general expense or owing owing means we have used the services but we haven't paid it yet okay so we already added it in the income statement and now we also need to include it in a current liability in the SFP so the general expense owing needs to be written as an other payable now there is another other payable with the name of loan interest so most of the time students forget this 
uh, to write this loan interest as an accrued expense. Why? Because mostly the examiner doesn't mention this loan interest in the additional information. Therefore, the student forgets it. Now, as you can see, uh, as far as the loan is concerned, we haven't paid any interest on the loan. As you can see, the loan amount is 60,000. And what we need to do, we need to apply 8% on 60,000. 60,000 times 8%, 6 8s are 48. So the total amount of loan interest is 4,800. Now, if the examiner clearly mentions we haven't paid any interest. So the entire amount of 4,800 needs to be written as an accrued expense uh, in the current library. But if instead the examiner says that uh, in the list of balances here above, the examiner says loan interest or loan interest paid 2000 okay so if out of the 4800 2000 has already been paid then the remaining balance that is 2800 needs to be written as an accrued expense okay but in this question as the entire amount is accrued so therefore we need to include it in the other paper now the loan amount also be written uh, in the current liability why because the loan needs to be repaid in the second year that is next year so uh, when we enter the loan uh, in the SOFP, we always need to write this 8% and the year also in which the loan needs to be repaid. If we just write bank loan, the examiner will not award us any marks for that. Okay. So the full name for loan must be written uh, that is 8% and the year. So what I'm doing, I'm adding up all of the current liabilities. So the total for current liability is 95,400. So finally, it's time to balance the SOFP. Okay, balance the balance sheet. So what we need to do now, we need to add up the capital and liability section. Now there is closing capital. We do not have any non-current liability. We just have current liabilities. So what I need to do, I need to add up both of these values. And this would be total capital and liability also uh, written as total equity and liability. Now, whenever we say the balance sheet is balanced or an SOFP is balanced, this means total assets always equal total capital and liabilities okay asset side always equal capital and liability now as you can see if assets equal capital and liability this means our sofp is balanced so this is basically the accounting equation uh, what it's all about assets is equal to capital plus liability okay in this question it is balanced this means uh, we are going to get full marks because all of the adjustments are correct but if instead our SOFP is not balanced in the examination, so uh, there's nothing to worry about it. Why? Because not like that if the SOFP is not balanced at the end, you'll be getting zero mark. It's not the case. Okay. So if it's uh, the question, uh, we have, for example, 15 marks for this SOFP and we did two mistakes. One mistake uh, was worth two marks and other the mistake was worth one mark. So we'll be uh, the examiner will be deducting three marks. And you can easily get 12 out of 15 for that. Okay. So we do not need to worry about if the SOFP is not balanced because if there is a single mistake of one or two marks, then also our balance, uh, the balancing of the balance sheet can be affected. So I hope, dear students, you are able to understand uh, how can we prepare an, a statement of financial position.